Now the last bit or the most important bit in this particular section is you need to know the difference between atherosclerosis and Burgess disease. At the end of your case, this is all it's going to come down to whether this patient is a case of atherosclerosis or Burgess because in your exam, they're not going to give you acute limb ischemia. It is going to be chronic limb ischemia with or without a gangrene and they will only ask you questions. How do you say this is Burgess or how do you say this is atherosclerosis? Now, uh, this is not given in most of your textbooks, but you guys need to be aware of this. To call it Burgess disease, that particular patient and his symptoms should fulfill what we call as the Shinoya's criteria. Okay. It has to fulfill the Shinoya's criteria of which first and most important is the patient should be a smoker and onset of symptoms. Onset of symptoms should be less than 50 years of age. So what do I mean by this? You might have a 70 year old man with you. Doesn't mean that it is atherosclerosis. But if his symptoms have started 25 years before, that means he's, his symptoms started at the age of 45. So he falls into this criteria of onset of symptoms less than 50. But at the same, same time, if he's 70 years of age, but his symptoms started only five years back, he does not fall into the Shinoya's criteria. Okay, so you need to understand that it is onset of the symptoms, not the age of the patient is what that matters. Okay, next, Burgess disease invariably involves the infrapopulatal. That means it is more distal, more distal involvement. And this is common sense, okay, because we already know that Burgess disease only involves the medium or the small vessels. Okay, and you know that atherosclerosis disease of the larger vessels. So common sense, anything below the popliteal artery, if it is involved, more likely to be Burgess disease. If it is higher up, that means if it is femoral or iliac or iliac, more likely to be atherosclerosis than Burgess. Next, in Burgess disease, you can have phlebitis migraines or upper limb involvement. And the last one, absence of other risk factors of atherosclerosis, like dyslipidemia, hypertension, if all these risk factors are there, it is more likely to be atherosclerosis than Burgess disease. Okay, so under Shinoyo's criteria, you have five points and all these five must be satisfied before you call this as a patient of Burgess disease. He should be a smoker and his onset of symptoms should be at an age less than 50 years of age. It should be an infrapopulated involvement the patient should have phlebitis migraines and there should be no other risk factors of atherosclerosis. Now, apart from these five points that the Shinoya's criteria, there are certain other differences that you need to know and it's pretty easy. So, let's just look at it. Okay, you have atherosclerosis and on the right side you have Burgess. Okay, now Let's understand. We know that atherosclerosis only involves the arteries, correct? It's a purely arterial disorder. Okay. Whereas Burgers can involve both the arteries and the vein. This is a classical example for peripheral vascular disease. Okay. So it's arterial and venous. It can involve the veins. It doesn't mean that it will, but it can involve the veins. Now, if it is arterial, which are the arteries it involves? We already know it is the large arteries. Okay. Whereas Burgers is a medium or small sized arteries. Next, in the artery, which layer does atherosclerosis commonly involve? We know that this is the artery and the plaque only happens on the inside. It doesn't involve the vessel wall. So it only involves the tunica intima. Okay, whereas Burgers involves all the layers of the vessel wall. All layers of vessel wall. Okay, so this is another way of differentiating between atherosclerosis and Burgess disease. Okay, these are the other findings. But like I said, Shinoya's criteria is the most important for you to tell whether this is a case of Burgess or atherosclerosis.